the hymn number 23, Christian Fellowship. <coughs> What's to be the tie that binds? Was very frequently used by the brethren when receiving Brother Russell into their classes or receiving Brother Russell at various conventions. And I, another, and, and this happened to be one of his favorite hymns. And, and no doubt uh, they, they used that hymn in welcoming Brother Russell, among other favorite hymns that he had was 273, Son of My Soul, My Father, Dear. Dear brethren, we are not here, we are not here to exercise angel worship. We are not here to worship Brother Russell and these other brethren that have followed in his footsteps, appointed by God. We are here, dear brethren, to give remembrance our beloved Brother Russell. And I'd like to share a couple of thoughts about why we are not worshiping Brother Russell. For the sake of time, brethren, I'm only going to get into involved perhaps with just a couple of thoughts because I've, I've had too many here uh, to, to uh, share with you. What I'd like to share with you is 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 13. And in this particular text, and to esteem them, it says, so say, and to esteem them very highly in love for their works. Say, and be at peace among yourselves. Among the many, many promises that God has made to the righteous, there is one in particular which pledges that these individuals will be held in everlasting remembrance. And we're all very familiar with Psalms 112, chapter verse 6. We will hold them in everlasting remembrance because of faithfulness. And so, even though that this particular promise was in particular referring to the ancient worthies it is indeed applicable in a general way to all the righteous in the scriptures it certainly does give certain individuals by name as they are specified uh, in the Bible. And of course, uh, these extra biblical characters, we believe that our dear pastor will be held in most hallowed, sacred, and loving remembrance. And perhaps, we, um, with the exception of our Lord, uh, he will be esteemed and loved and honored of all others who have ever lived on earth as a member of the human family. And we don't say this with the least amount of angel worship. Our hearts, because in the prophecies and types of, the, of scriptures, apart from our Lord, he is more honorably pointed out more than any other member of the church. And because apart from our Lord to him were committed greater privileges 
and by him were to perform greater works on God's behalf than they were permitted to or performed by any other servant of God. And so, dear brother, it's a thought that we are, let's not be ashamed to esteem, love, and honor one whom Jehovah has openly, if you will, esteemed, loved, and honored, and now more than ever before in man's history. In Luke, the 12th chapter, verse 42, our very own loving master has shared with us and has declared that this individual who would set over the storehouse was faithful and wise. Distributing meat in due season. We understand, brethren, that that the Prussian truth was cleansed by the fall of 1914. But it was not cleansed as the Prussian truth or given all at once at the end, but it, it was progressive. As, as Brother Russell received these precious truths from the Master, yes, he, he misunderstood some things, and yes, he made his mistakes, and this was the purpose of cleansing the Fuji truth. And as the Fuji truth was given, this truth was gradually cleansed. Brother Russell was given his portion of meat in due season. It's also interesting to note here, brethren, that the word ruler in this particular uh, scripture really should be set over as the common version does properly express the thought of the original. The revised version is more preferable, setting over his household to give him meat as a steward, not as a lord or a master, rather a general servant or servant of all. That servant refers to a specific individual, and that was Brother Russell. In Acts the 18th chapter, verse 25, and Romans the 12th chapter, verse 11, the apostle does focus our attention on the word fervent, which is translated from the Greek word the zeal, which signifies hot. To boil according to Strong's exhaustive in accordance. So, can we say, dear brethren, that amongst being faithful and wise, that he was extremely zealous for the Lord? Never took a vacation, never took a holiday. He worked seven days a week. And for the amount of work that he had done for the Lord's cause and purpose, he did a tremendous amount of work in serving his, his beloved Lord. In 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 13, and to esteem them very highly in love, for their works sake, and be at peace amongst yourselves. The Lord has appointed Brother Russell 
as that faithful white servant in dispensing the harvest truth, enjoying its harmony, peace, joy, and comfort under the great shepherd's son and is appointed under that shepherd, Brother Russell. Yes, Brother Russell was born in February the 16th, 1852. Yes, he passed October 31st of 1916. And we all are very familiar with his growth and uh, as a young man and uh, seeking after uh, the, the correct understanding of God where he uh, continued to uh, indulge in other religions and other isms. A perfect example of dear Brother Russell in his zeal for the Lord was typed by Joshua <coughs> who David's mightiest warrior in killing first 800 in battle with a spear, which type our pastors literally, literally his literary work against the defenders of the eternal torment doctrine. And then Joshua being killing 300 more with a spear, which our dear pastor was typed in working against the defenders of the doctrine of consciousness of the dead. Naturally, a scholar would be a writer. Very, human, very few human beings have ever written more than he did. His correspondence alone was sufficient for the life work of an industrious, intelligent man. That it, we should bear in mind that over the years he had uh, communicated by 300,000 uh, letters and posts that were written to him. And obviously, no one man could, could handle all this uh, form of communication as, as letters because a response would be required. But uh, he would read these letters and then he would, his close aides would, he would instruct his aides how to properly respond to these uh, letters. Except for the most difficult that he handled himself. Can we imagine the time involved? and the labor, and his efforts. And if this wasn't enough for any man, as an author, he produced six unrivaled books on the Bible, whose combined circulation in his life aggregated 10 million copies. He published a number of booklets of great value. One of which was on hell and had been circulated more widely than any other booklet ever written. He produced over 200 tracts to instruct and to attract people for the truth. His 200 tracks had uh, achieved a circulation of 50 million, 50 million copies. 
his sermons of caring regularly every week for 13 years to the published part of that time simultaneously over 2,000 newspapers having a combined circulation of 15 million copies. This wasn't thousands, this was millions. If this wasn't enough for your brother, he edited a semi-monthly religious magazine with a circulation of 45,000 copies. His scenario of the photograph of creation had a wide circulation, as it also the case with the Angelophone record lectures. We also know him by being a lecturer. We also know him by a preacher. He was probably most well known by his lectures having, uh, uh, that he would provide. And it wasn't a type of thing where he used the same lecture over and over again, or a, uh, an accumulation of lectures that he would use uh, after the preceding one. and. Uh, or he would, uh, 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 after finishing all these lectures, he, he would start from the beginning all over again. Not with Brother Russell. He lectured on hundreds of subjects, which were of a compelling interest, as well as subjects, recognizing his difficulties. His lectures were direct, clear, and simple, logical, convincing. His last public lecture, lecture occurred where he spoke at a large and the best theater in San Antonio, Texas. And what do you suppose he taught them? This world is on fire. I should correct that. The world on fire. And at this time, dear brother, he was failing. And he instructed his secretary, his companion, he said, stay close tonight and to be ready to pick up the thread of thought where I dropped it. He spoke that evening for three quarters of an hour without any sign of suffering, with perfect self poise, always walked quietly off the rostrum in an orderly fashion and quietly behind a screen where he sat down for maybe approximately five minutes. And during this interim period, uh, his secretary would walk out from behind the screen and continue the discourse where Brother Russell left off. And this continued. Brother Russell spoke for another half an hour. And he would quietly leave the, the rostrum and, and sit behind the screen and his secretary would continue the discourse where he would sit down for, say, seven minutes. This continued, as we can only imagine that he spoke approximately an hour and a half more. At the discussion table, it was uh, it was a, a discussion as to how Brother Russell passed away, and uh, I personally didn't know. But it was at this time that his strength began to fail. 
He experienced cold chills, but he pressed on. He shook, shivered, and his pain began to settle deep. He was doubled over. His mouth began to fill with stomach fluids. Then he would sit up and there, and then he would lay back down to relieve the pain. And this, uh, this continued for about seven hours. Now understand that uh, after his first, uh, his last public discourse, uh, he continued on this train to go to California and to serve around the country. And when he was returning, he was in Texas, as, as we understand. And uh, he would continue for another seven hours uh, without complaining. His fingernail became this color. He began with perspiration on his forehead, as well as his hands and feet. He began to grow cold. Then he instructed his secretary to take a white sheet and to fold it. And we're, I think we're all familiar with your brother with the toga scene. And this was a symbol by Romans in sign of victory. Personally, I wish I had uh, the composure that he had. Obviously, I don't, which I did, but I don't. He died in a car, I'm not sure if I can pronounce this correctly, R-O-S-E-I-S-L-E, on Santa Fe train number 10. And then the secretary called in the Pullman conductor and he said to him, this is how a Christian dies. His powers of ex exhibition were true of the first order and were so well in hand as to appeal to the learned and unlearned alike. An unequal proof of genius. Wherever he was announced to speak, the largest and best auditoriums were crowded and frequently thousands and usually hundreds were turned away, unable to gain entrance. He did not depend on tricks of authority or authority to win his hearers. He appealed to their heads, their hearts, in a simple and direct manner, which wins the hearer without oratorical fireworks. He was the most cosmopolitan lecturer that ever lived, having addressed audiences in this capacity in almost every country on earth, traveling between one man and two million miles. Truly, he was a great a, executive. You see, dear brother, he was the Lord's 
Ele já tinha chegado. We have about one minute. Something I'd like to share with you. The secret of a happy, consecrated life is giving the one, of oneself to others. That statement alone must have blessed the hearts of many, the hearts of many of the brethren. And that, at the time they expressed this thought, little did he realize that he continues to bless us with that thought and it described as he quoted Acts the 20th chapter verse 35. May God bless his memory to us. As one of the righteous. How privileged we have to have received his legacy. And study the truth writing of the truth in truth. May the Lord as much as peace us. Amen.